Okay, we're going to shift gears here for a second because I want to start getting into some of the nuts and bolts of what we're going to be covering over the next three and a half days. And we have officially gotten our thoughts. And of course, you're going to hear this permeate through the one-on-one -on -one interviews, you know, the session that Taylor's about to do. You're going to hear it in our, in our panelists. I mean, a lot of what we're talking about is going to resonate throughout our time together. But I want to shift gears for a second because I made the, the, the claim that there's no point in getting into tactics until we're right here and right here. Live on real formula mindset. And so now we're going to talk business plan for just a second. Now, I'm not going to bore you guys because I know you guys are a fun audience. I like to have a lot of fun. And we're not going to dissect a business plan from start to finish. In fact, most of you already have your hands on our dis business plan. But I, I have pulled out two of our coaching clients' business plans at random. Well, I say at random, but I like what I saw. Okay, we're, for, for privacy reasons, I'm not sharing with you their name. I'm just going to show some things from their plan that I was really impressed with. And before I do that, I also want to make sure you're aware, if you didn't already get a copy of our business plan, because we decided for this year we weren't going to just give it away, because we want to start creating a very tight-knit group, uh, an exclusive group of high producers around North America. So we let all of our clients get it, of course, and if they, were on, they attended the webinar, they got the PDF copy, and now that it's January the 9th, I am going to give it away to those that did not. So do me a favor, I want you to write down, if you did not get a copy of the 2023 Glover U Business Plan, the same one that I'm using in my business, by the way, the same one our team is going to use to sell 1,250 homes this year, if you did not get a copy of our plan, write this down, or you can do this right on your phone right now if you want. You go to GloverU.com forward slash plan. GloverU.com forward slash plan. Now that's selling online for 50 bucks right now. I'm gifting it to all of you for free. The code, the code is 2023summit. 2023 Summit. So when you're on GloverU.com forward slash plan, it's going to take you into the GloverU shop, the store, where you can buy shirts and clothes and videos and all that stuff. Well, the business plan is probably the first or second one right at the top. There's a 90-minute instructional video of me presenting the plan from start to finish. There's also an actual PDF copy of the plan. It's yours for free so long as you use that code. 2023 for 2023 summit. If you want to do it, you know, in a moment, go ahead and do so. It's GloverU.com forward slash plan. It's a PDF copy plus an instructional video. I want to share with you from some business plans that I had a chance to review from some of our clients. I took out some random pages of their plan. And I want to give you an idea because I know a lot of you in this room You've completed a plan. Have you completed a plan for 2023? Let me see your hands up real high, real high, real high. Where my business plan? You guys completed, of course, all the front row has completed their plan. <laughs> so for the rest of you, and for those of you that have already completed your plan, I want to share with you some things that I think you should be considering adding to that plan if you haven't yet. Now, do, these two examples that I'm going to share did come right out of the Glover U plan, so it should look familiar. One particular individual took the plan and put it on a Word document, so just cleaned it up to look, you know, to fit whatever look fits them. And the other individual wrote right on the actual business plan itself. So these are in no particular order. In fact, this isn't even the entire plan. It's just a handful of pages that I took from the plan. And here's my recommendation to you. I'm going to point out some things in there that caused me to say, yes, I need to make sure the audience knows that needs to be included. So I'll point those things out to you. And you can write those down, or if you want, you can take a picture of the screen when they put it up on the screen, whatever makes your life easier. So I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull up again. These are not necessarily in any particular order. These are random pieces from the Glover U business plan. And I saw a few things in there that I want to share with you that these agents did that I think can help you as well. So let's take a look at the first page here. This is an individual's daily schedule which many of you create a daily schedule. I'm going to share with you a couple things that stand out to me on that daily schedule. 
One of the things that I found very fascinating, this is an agent that will sell 50 homes in 2023, mostly from social media. And when I say mostly, like 40 plus will come from social media. And I know that they will sell that many because that's what they did in 2022, or that's what they did in the last 24 months using social media. You'll notice that there's specific time set aside for content, research, creation, and editing. Most of us, when we're using social media as a tool, we're just kind of posting haphazardly, right? We're just kind of posting when we think about it. Whenever it comes to mind, whenever we're at a fancy restaurant, oh, seafood tower, somebody get a picture of that. Let's get a picture of that. And then you post it. Save that photo for something else. Save that photo for later. Just because you're in that moment, you don't have to post it in that moment. You can spread it out. You can schedule it. You can see, obviously, they've got a one-on-one -on -one coaching call at 1.30 with Sarah Huffman. Sarah, where are you at? Yeah, there we go. But look, at each day is budgeting time for social media. Do you know what else that means? No other wasted time for consuming content later in the day. When you're at home with your family, you're at home with your family. When you're scrolling on Instagram and scrolling on Facebook, you are consuming. This is not consuming. This is scheduled and organized. Content research, content creation. Social media is built right into the schedule. Next, I wanted to share. This particular individual also had a very strong database follow-up plan. And for those in the back, I'll read some of the things on here. Here's what I find fascinating. Those top three, January, February, and March, that is their first quarter business plan to the database, to, to add value to the database. When you think about what you're doing to add value to your database, are you getting that structured with it? Are you actually writing it out month by month? Different ideas of things you're gonna do each month? Look at January, email, call, mail, very important client group, something we've been teaching for the last couple years. Email, year in review, call, I have a goal script. Mail, a CMA and letter with all sold properties. February, email, database box, text, very important client group, post from marketing. March, email, call, mail, very important client group. When you look at the value you're adding to your database, are you adding this kind of value? Are you spending the time each month? You know every single month what's gonna happen as it relates to adding value to your database. And there are some more specifics of, oh, this is, I love at the top, this particular individual took our advice on hybrid farming. For those of you that are familiar with what we call hybrid farming, it's identifying a neighborhood that has at least a 5% turnover. So for every 100 homes, every 12 months, there's five homes that sell. Why would you work a neighborhood that has two to 3% per year when you can find a neighborhood in your market that has five to six? If you're gonna spend the same amount of time the same amount of money, in theory, you're gonna get double the results in a neighborhood with 5% turnover versus two and a half. Because a lot of the neighborhoods you farm, I know, are two to 3% turnover. Two to three homes out of every 100 homes per year sell. Go find the ones that have five or six or seven out of 100. You're gonna get double the result on the same effort. There is the hybrid farming plan each month. January, call and mailer. February, call, March, mailer. April, call, May, mailer. June, neighborhood event. July, call. Each month is pre-scheduled of how they're gonna get business from this particular farm. Is your plan that detailed? Did you actually identify the farm and then write out in advance what you're gonna do? Or do you just, whenever I think about it, I'll do it. The whatever I, whenever I think about it, I'll do it is not gonna work anymore. That's why I'm having this conversation with you. Next, social media and video marketing strategies. As you can see, this is a page right from the actual plan. Okay, so C plan attached here. Oh, actually, let me go back for a second. Watch YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram of others doing what I want to do. 30 minutes daily. 
I can promise you this will be a successful real estate agent through social media from that one alone because it's intentional studying of someone that's already succeeding at a high level through social media. Find new creators that are successful, ideally one per week. Again, what does your plan look like? How does your plan compare? Let's go even deeper. Social media plan. Um, you think this person is going to have some success on social media this year? Say yes. Yes. Post to feed four to seven times per week. Five to ten stories daily. Engagement stickers, reels three to five times per week. Reply to five to ten stories. Respond to all DMs, comment and like. Like and respond. DM and message. Search three hashtags that ideal clients would use. Go to the recent tab. Leave a valuable comment on five different posts for each of the three hashtags daily. This is specifically how to succeed on social media. By the way, if you're wondering where does this stuff come from, this particular individual has been to every single Glover U event in the last 12 months and also has a one-on-one -on -one coach. That's where this comes from. Let's take a look at another. Oh, and then of course, they're on real life. They've specifically identified wealth, Time for self and self-care, adventure, community. They've written out what their unreal life looks like. And I can tell you, based on what I know about this person, who I'm very impressed with, she's in the room, is not only has she written this out, but she now has taken it and put it on a vision board and laid out what it's going to look like so you can see it, you can taste it, you can feel it, you can experience it. Because our phones don't just spit out cash when we make a call. We have to be reminded every single day why we come in early, why we stay later, why are we going to make that extra call? This is a different individual's plan that I also was impressed with that I want to share with you. As you may be familiar, part six of the business plan has the top three sources of business. And in this particular case, open houses and events, farming and expires. The individual on part seven took those three, because you know in the plan, you have the how are you going to get business from your top three sources. Because I'd rather you double down on what's working than continuing to introduce new ones. Most of you are familiar with what we mean by double down, but in case you forgot, I want to clear it up with you once more. Go ahead and write this down. Doubling down on a source. Write down doubling down on a source. Too many of us are trying to sprinkle around. Little here, little there. Oh, 90 days is all I have to commit to. Okay, where do I sign? Could I get out after 30 if it doesn't work? Yeah, shiny object over here. Give me some more of that. No. Pick a source that you're already experiencing some success with. By the way, the last business plan was someone who's already having some success with that particular source. And you better believe that was a double down plan. That was everything I'm going to do to double down on that source of business. So let me share with you how you arrive at doubling down. First, you look at what source of business is giving you the best ROI or, and it could be an and, what source of business is giving you the best ROI and or what source of business is trending in the best ROI direction for you. Either identify a source that you're already experiencing a great ROI from and or a source that's trending in that direction. And instead of introdu introducing a new one, double down on that one. So what do I mean by double down? Well, there's actually three ways you can double down. Ready? The first one is the least popular. So I'm sorry, but I have to write it down. And I know you're going to have to write it down too. You're, you're, it, it might even be hard to write it down as you're writing it. Go ahead and write down time and effort, time and effort, AKA hard work. You can double down on hard work and get a better ROI, there's no doubt. You could work harder and get a better ROI, but life isn't just always about working harder. We talked about in the VIP lunch, but at some point in time, you're gonna hit a threshold and you need, you need to identify what is my definition of hard work and where is that threshold to where it becomes not worth it anymore? 
What is my definition of hard work? And what is my threshold for when it's not really worth it anymore? The reality is, wherever that is for you, I can tell you that doubling down on your time and effort on a particular source that's already giving you a good ROI is going to get you even better ROI. So I'll give you a for instance. When I first started in the business, I knew nothing different. My first broker told me, Jeff, there's two types of people in this world. People you know and people you don't know. Which group is bigger? Well, I don't know, Tim. I guess the people I don't know. Exactly. He said, so you're going to be better off getting business from people that don't know you, especially at your age. Because at 18 years old, looking like I was 14 years old, not a lot of people are going to trust me with their real estate. So he said, if you're, we're going to make a decision to work with people that you don't know. Okay, how do I do that? He said, well, you're going to start with expired listings. Because these are the people that are the furthest down the funnel. They've already raised their hand and said, I'll pay a commission. They've already raised their hand and said, yeah, you can put a sign in the yard. They've already raised their hand and said, you can show my house as much as you want. They've already raised their hand and said, uh, we, we can, you know, we're open to feedback and making improvements. So I made the decision to start with expired listings. And when I first started in the business, I called them for an hour a day from 8 until 9. And then at some point in time, when I was starting to have some mild success, meaning I was probably taking four or five listings per month off of expireds, Minus the first month, you know, the first month I think I took 11 listings working expires. It was beginner's luck for sure. I didn't do it again after that for like two years. So minus the, minus the first month, I was taking four to five listings a month from expired listings just by calling from eight to nine. And then I thought, well, wait a minute. If I'm getting four to five a month by calling from eight to nine, what if I added another hour in somewhere in the afternoon or in the evening? And so it was around that time I had one of my first real estate coaches and he gave me a challenge. He said, Jeff, for every day you don't have an appointment to go on, I want you to stay back and prospect for another hour. So now I went from one hour of prospecting to expireds to two hours of prospecting to expireds, which then took me from four to five expired listings taken per month to six or seven expired listings taken per month. Well, then I thought, well, wait a minute. If I'm making these calls, and I'm getting results, but on the days that I have to go on appointments, who's making, who, how can I get results if I'm out meeting with people? So then I thought, okay, what if I dropped them something in the mail? Again, this would be an extra effort. It also is a resource because it costs money. Another basic example would be, hey, Jeff, I had some good success from open houses last year. Great. How many deals did you do from open houses? I had 10 deals from open houses. Awesome. How many open houses did you do? I did 12. That's great. That's a pretty good return on your time. Yeah, and I'd like to do 20 deals from open houses in 2023. All right. How many open houses are you going to have to do then? 24 open houses. That's an example of doubling down on time and effort. Usually not a favorite, but it's always, always, always effective. The second way you can double down, and probably the most common, is on your resources. On your resources. Now this is where money comes into play, okay? An example would be when I was working expireds and I made the decision to add direct mail. That's doubling down on my resources. When I'm working expireds and I made the decision to hire someone else to make calls with me. That's doubling down on resources. My very first uh, inside sales associate, we didn't even call it back then, it was a telemarketer or a prospector. His name was Ryan Kreidoff. He was in a training class that I was in while I was the trainer of a company called Cobalt Banker Schweitzer Real Estate. And Ryan came up to me during class and said, hey Jeff, I'm not interested in really going out on appointments and stuff. Could I just stay back and make calls for you and, and you can go out on these appointments? Well, I'd love that. Yes, let's do it. So that's an example of doubling down on a resource. So I hired Ryan to stay back and make calls while I went out on appointments. Another example would be, let's just say you're getting some good results with Realtor.com leads. And, you know, Jeff, last year when I look at my numbers, I had 14 transactions from Realtor.com. Wow, good for you. How much did you spend on those four, or how much did you spend on Realtor.com last year. I spent about $30,000 on Realtor.com. 14 transactions for 30 grand, that's a pretty good return. 
Because if your average commission is seven or eight thousand dollars times fourteen, you spent thirty. That's a pretty good ROI. Could you call your rep at Realtor.com? Which the answer is no, because they'd never pick up the phone. Could you call your rep at Realtor.com and see if and ask them if you doubled your spend, if they would be willing to guarantee you double the amount of leads? Because that math works. Yeah, let me see what I can do. That's doubling down on resources. Don't move on and introduce other sources when you're already winning with one. But you could be winning at a higher level. Do you, do you want to know how I know you could be winning at a higher level? Underneath number three, because we're going to fill this in in a second, just write down this question. Write down this question. Honestly, dot, dot, dot. Honestly, dot, dot, dot. Am I exhausting Honestly, am I exhausting all options on this source of business? Am I exhausting all of my options on this source of business? All of my options. Meaning, when you look at all the things you could be doing to get business from that source, are you exhausted? have you exhausted all of them? Number three, way to double down, is on skills. Skills. You can double down on time and effort, you can double down on resources, you can double down on your skills. And I'm not always talking practice and role play. Although you know that that is absolutely a foundation of my business. When I was sitting in Tim's office at my very first firm, I remember, kind of scared, after 40 days in the business, I said, Tim, I got no listings, I got no sales, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it in this business. He said, Jeff, you just have to sound like you've been doing it a long time. Oh, was that all? Wow, thank you, <laughs> I'll get right back at it then. <laughs> Tim, I'm 18 years old, I look like I'm 14, I've never listed a home, I rent an apartment, I'm still driving my Pontiac Silver Grand Am from high school. My parents, I, you know, they're, they're my, my friends of all my parents, or my friends, the parents, you guys get what I'm saying. They're not gonna trust me, I'm young. Tim, how do I sound like I've been doing this for a long time? And I'll never forget, he pulled out of his bottom left hand drawer, many of you have heard this story, I share it on tour often, it's one of the Gloverisms. He pulled out the, a book out of his drawer. There was maybe five or six different sets of scripts in there. It was a binder that he had put together, and it was tabbed. You know, it had like different color tabs, and he opened it up, and he fanned the pages, and he said, Jeff, these are all the scripts from the great trainers today. Now, this was 2003, so most of these trainers were from the 90s. Great ones, too. Floyd Wickman, Mike Ferry, Brian Buffini. I mean, all these guys that had all their scripts. And he fanned it, because you know, nowadays, you sell seven homes and on social media, you're an, a CEO, entrepreneur, professional this, certified that, and this, the other. Everybody's a coach nowadays. There's only one that's doing it with you at a high level. So I fanned the pages, so I fanned the pages, or I'm sorry, he fanned the pages in front of me and said, Jeff, you need to pick two prospecting scripts and one listing appointment script from this book. Okay, so I start looking through, and, you know, I came to Floyd's script, and he's a great mentor of mine. You know, we actually had him on our stage, which was not really much of a stage, at our very first summit in 2018. It was such an honor to be able to interview him. And the thing with Floyd's scripts is his listing presentation is 27 pages long. And so I couldn't do that, because I wasn't going to write out 27 pages, because I had an idea where this was going. So I kept flipping through, and I found one that was kind of short and sweet. So I pulled those scripts out and said, okay, I feel good about this one. It was the expired script and the for sale by owner script and then the listing appointment because he wanted me to pull out a listing appointment. I said, okay, now what, Tim? I said, now, Jeff, I want you to take these scripts and just outside my office there, there's a closet with some yellow pads. I want you to take out the yellow pads and I want you to write them out once a day for the next 30 days. Tim, what? Just write them out? Just write them out. 
said, Jeff, do you want to sound like you've been doing this a long time? I do, because I'm afraid people are going to ask me my age or my experience. He said, good. Then write them out once a day for the next 30 days and come back and see me. So I do so. After 30 days, no listings, no sales. I go back to Tim. Here's my yellow pads with everything written out. Now what? He said, Jeff, you've been taking the classes on how to write contracts and hold open houses and all that, right? Uh Uh-huh. He said, good. I'm glad we got that out of the way. Now what I want you to do is I want you to chant these scripts aloud once a day for the next 30 days. Chant them aloud. What do you mean, chant them aloud? He said, I want you to hold them in front of your face and just read them aloud. Like, in the office? Yes, in the office, Jeff. So this was like this this was the summer of 2003. I remember it was like July, it was hot. I'm in the back parking lot of the office because you know, I was in a cubicle and no one else in the office was doing this by the way. So I'm convinced to this day this little training program he made up on the spot anyways, by the way. So I'm pacing around in the parking lot just reading scripts to myself. Clients are coming in for closings and I'm kind of ducking behind the dumpster and after 30 days, I go back to Tim. I say, okay, Tim, I did your little project, now what? He said, Jeff, we're not done. I got one more thing for you to do. And I said, Tim, I'm running out of time. And some of you may have been there or are there or are nearing that. And what I can tell you, when you feel like you're reaching your expiration date, meaning, and we all set one when we started, if I'm not successful by this date, then. If I'm not successful by this date, then I'm gonna do this instead. Whenever you get close to that date, extend it another 30 days. And when you get close again, figure out a way to extend it another 30 days. The challenge that we have with our industry today, which very much concerns me, and I have this conversation with our brokers and owners and and team leaders, is it's too easy to have a side hustle today. See, back in, you know, the early 2000s, 2010, 15, whatever, there was no such thing. You either were full-time or you didn't work here. Now you can have three different jobs. Well, the problem is that those side hustles are holding you back. Those side hustles are the reason why you're not hitting your goals in real estate. I can promise you that. The fastest way to have succeed in real estate is to have no other options. You have to eliminate the other options. The challenge is, is I get it. It's, it's Jeff, I gotta pay the bills. Great. Then you know what? Leave the business for some time. Save some money up. Come back when you can give it 100% of your effort because you're not going to succeed in the next market on 70% of your effort. So at this point in time, I said to Tim, Tim, I'm kind of running out of time here. You know, I've got bills to pay. I'm not making any money in real estate. He said, Jeff, just give me 30 more days and you can have the rest of your career. Sound familiar, Justin? That's one of the things I told Justin. Justin, if you'll just give me 90 days, you can do whatever you want in life. Well, as we talked about in the VIP room, everything in life is the lattice effect. We all have people that are pouring into us at a certain level or have poured into us at a certain point in time. So choose wisely the people that are pouring into you, by the way. We'd love to apply to pour into you as much as you want, by the way. So this last 30 days, he says, Jeff, here's what I want you to do. I want you to now take these scripts and go around the office and find people to role play with. All right? He said, Jeff, it's really normal in the business. There's agents in the office. They'll role play with you. And if they won't, just come back and find me and I'll role play with you. Okay, no problem. Well, five, six days in, it it actually worked out okay. You know, I'd go down the office. Hey, Harry, would you role play with me? Tim said it's okay. You can be the seller. I'll be the agent. Oh, sure thing, Jeff. Five, six days go by. This is great. Okay, I'm kind of, I got this thing down. Week two, I'm going around the office. Next thing you know, doors are closing. Agents are picking up their phone and acting like they're talking to people. So I found myself in the last half of the month interviewing or role-playing a lot with Tim. And so 30 days go by of role-play. I say, okay, Tim, no listings, no sales. Now what? He said, Jeff, this was the Friday before Labor Day. Meet me on the Tuesday after Labor Day. But none of this 9.30 stuff. What are you coming in at 9.30 for? That's when all the average agents come in. Come in at 7.30, and I'll show you how to succeed with what you just did. Okay. So I met him at the office, 7.30, the Tuesday after Labor Day, and he showed me how to pull expireds. And he showed me how to pull for sale by owners. 
And I made a decision. By the way, that was, that was September of 2003. That was my first month that I took 11 listings, not knowing anyone, 18, 19 years old, just by actually mastering scripts and sounding like I knew what I was doing. Now, of course, I went out on a lot of appointments where I would still get questioned my age and so forth. Didn't matter. I still took 11 listings. Now, only three or four of them actually sold, but that's okay, <laughs> okay? Sometimes we have to go out and scrape our knee a little bit and learn what we should take and what we shouldn't. But the moral to that story is you probably have a skill that you need to double down on. What is it? Is it sales skills? Is it presentation skills? Is it social media skills? Is it digital marketing skills? Is it writing copy skills? There's some type of skill that you have within you that you have to double down on, and it's time to identify it if you haven't yet. This is a good week to start. Because aside from what we do here on main stage, you have plenty of breakouts over the next three days to choose from to help you in one particular area, specifically as it relates to this. So when you're looking at your business plan, make sure you're identifying what source, just pick one, what source am I going to double down on? And then once I double down on that source, could I give it some more time and effort or no, nah, I don't wanna do that one. I'm good with resources. I got enough money saved up. We can invest some resources on this. I can get better at skills. Let me go watch people who are succeeding with video and pay attention to what they're doing and, and the type of copy that they're speaking into the camera. Time and effort, resources, and skills. I'm going to go through the rest of this before we hit our next session. This is, again, when you write out where your business is going to come from, you have to have specifics of things that you're going to do to get business from those sources. writing out a new daily schedule. You can't possibly have a significant increase in business without a modification to your daily routine. The first thing when an agent tells me they want to go from 50 transactions to 100 in one year, the first thing we look at is, all right, let's take a look at your daily schedule. Let's take a look at your morning routine. Because by the way, one thing you'll notice about our business plans, notice that they stop at lunchtime. I don't care what you do in the afternoon. If you own the morning, you'll win the day. If you master what you do from the time you wake up until lunchtime, you'll have whatever business life it is you want. You'll have all the income and all the success and all the appointments that you want. If you do the same boring and mundane things day in, day out, week after week, month after month, the more consistent you are with your morning routine, the more consistent the appointments will show up. The more consistent the commission checks will show up. So if you made a modification to your goal this year, did you make a modification to your schedule? Those two are correlated. 